Let us now explain the position of the winds, their oppositions, which can blow simultaneously with which, and which cannot, their names and number, and any other of their affections that have not been treated in the particular questions. What we say about their position must be followed with the help of the figure. For clearness' sake, we have drawn the circle of the horizon, which is round, but it represents the zone in which we live. For that can be divided in the same way. Let us also begin by laying down that those things are locally contrary, which are locally most distant from one another, just as things specifically most remote from one another are specific contraries. Now things that face one another from opposite ends of a diameter are locally most distant from one another. See diagram. Let A be the point where the sun sets at the equinox, and B the point opposite, the place where it rises at the equinox. Let there be another diameter cutting this at right angles, and let the point H on it be the north and its diametrical opposite O the south. Let Z be the rising of the sun at the summer solstice, and E its setting at the summer solstice. D its rising at the winter solstice, and G its setting at the winter solstice. Draw a diameter from Z to G, and from D to E. Then, since those things are locally contrary which are most dis distant from one another in space, and points diametrically opposite are most distant from one another, those winds must necessarily be contrary to one another that blow from opposite ends of a diameter. The names of the winds according to their position are these. Zephyrus is the wind that blows from A, this being the point where the sun sets at the equinox. Its contrary is Apeliotes, blowing from B, the point where the sun rises at the equinox. The wind blowing from H, the north, is the true north wind, called Aparctias, while Notus, blowing from O, is its contrary. For this point is the south, and O is contrary to H, being diametrically opposite to it. Caesius blows from Z, where the sun rises at the summer solstice. Its contrary is not the wind blowing from E, but lips blowing from G. For lips blows from the point where the sun sets at the winter solstice and is diametrically opposite to Caesius, so it is its contrary. Eurus blows from D, coming from the point where the sun rises at the winter solstice. It borders on Notus, and so we often find that people speak of Euro Noti. Its contrary is not lips blowing from G, but the wind that blows from E, which some call Argestes, some Olympias, and some Skyron. This blows from the point where the sun sets at, winter so at the summer solstice, and is the only wind that is diametrically opposite to Eurus. These are the winds that are diametrically opposite to one another and their contraries. There are other winds which have no contraries. The wind they call Thracius, which lies between Argestes and Aparctius, blows from I, and the wind called Mises, which lies between Caesius and Aparctius, from K. The line I, K, nearly coincides with the ever-visible circle, but not quite. These winds have no contraries. Mises has not, or else there would be a wind blowing from the point M, which is diametrically opposite. Thracius corresponding to the point I has not, for there there would be a wind blowing from N, the point which is diametrically opposite. But perhaps a local wind, which the inhabitants of those parts call Phoenicius, blows from that point. These are the most important and definite winds, and these their places. There are more winds from the north than from the south. The reason for this is that the region in which we live lies nearer to the north. Also, much more water and snow is pushed aside into this quarter because the other lies under the sun and its course. When this thaws and soaks into the earth and is exposed to the heat of the sun and the earth, it necessarily causes evaporation to rise in greater quantities over a greater space. Of the winds we have described, Aparctius is the north wind in the strict sense. Thracius and Mises are north winds too. Caesius is half north and half east. South are that which blows from due south and lips. East, the wind from the rising of the sun at the equinox and Eurus. Phoenicius is half south and half east. West, the wind from the true west and that called Argestes. More generally, these winds are classified as northerly or southerly. The west winds are counted as northerly, for they blow from the place of sunset and are therefore colder. The east winds as southerly, for they are warmer because they blow from the place of sunrise. 
So the distinction of cold and hot or warm is the basis for the division of the winds into northerly and southerly. East winds are warmer than west winds because the sun shines in the east longer, whereas it leaves the west sooner and reaches it later. Since this is the distribution of the winds, it is clear that contrary winds cannot blow simultaneously. They are diametrically opposite to one another, and one of the two must be overpowered and cease. Winds that are not diametrically opposite to one another may blow simultaneously. For instance, the winds from Z and from D. Hence, it sometimes happens that both of them, though different winds and blowing from different quarters, are favorable to sailors making for the same point. Contrary winds commonly blow at opposite seasons. Thus, Caesius and in general the winds north of the summer solstice blow about the time of the spring equinox, but about the autumn equinox, lips, and Zephyrus about the summer solstice, but about the winter solstice, Eurus. Aparctius, Thracius, and Argestes are the winds that fall on others most and stop them. Their source is so close to us that they are greater and stronger than other winds. They bring fair weather most of all winds for the same reason, for, blowing as they do from close at hand, they overpower the other winds and stop them. They also blow away the clouds that are forming and leave a clear sky, unless they happen to be very cold. Then they do not bring fair weather, but being colder than they are strong, they condense the clouds before driving them away. Caesius does not bring fair weather because it returns upon itself, hence the saying, bringing it on himself as Caesius does clouds. When they cease, winds are succeeded by their neighbors in the direction of the movement of the sun. For an effect is most apt to be produced in the neighborhood of its cause, and the cause of winds moves with the sun. Contrary winds have either the same or contrary effects. Thus, Lips and Caesius, sometimes called Hellespontius, are both rainy gestes and Eurus are dry, the latter being dry at first and rainy afterwards. Mises and Aparctius are coldest and bring most snow. Aparctius, Thracius, and Argestes bring hail. Notice Zephyrus and Eurus are hot. Caesius covers the sky with heavy clouds, lips with lighter ones. Caesius does this because it returns upon itself and combines the qualities of Boreas and Eurus. By being cold, it condenses and gathers the vaporous air, and because it is easterly, it carries with it and drives before it a great quantity of such matter. Aparctius, Thracius, and Argestes bring fair weather for the reason we have explained before. These winds and Macy's are most commonly accompanied by lightning. They are cold because they blow from the north, and lightning is due to cold, being ejected when the clouds contract. Some of these same bring hail with them for the same reason, namely that they cause a sudden condensation. Hurricanes are commonest in autumn and next in spring. Aparctius, Thracius, and Argestes give rise to them most. This is because hurricanes are generally formed when some winds are blowing and others fall on them, and these are the winds which are most apt to fall on others that are blowing, the reason for which, too, we have explained before. The SDA veer round. They begin from the north and become for dwellers in the west Thracia, Argeste, and Zephyrus, for Zephyrus belongs to the north. For dwellers in the east, they veer round as far as Apeliotes. So much for the winds, their origin and nature, and the properties common to them all, or peculiar to each.